Welcome back to your listeners. Hope you're doing well on this beautiful day. Today's video is a collection of five creepy encounter stories. Creepy encounter stories are terrifying true stories that involve everyday people that you might run into on the street, except these are people that you would not want to run into on the street. That's right, these are the people who say something to you, you kind of stare at them with your head cocked to the side, and they run away screaming, you know, random things like, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy or something like that. Not that I have any experience doing that whatsoever. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and I hope you're ready for this, because this is five creepy encounters from Reddit. Enjoy. I've had creepy encounters at Wally World before, but usually I was there for more than 15 minutes. I'm a girl though, I'm not exactly thin or small, I have a very young looking face. I also have super short hair, it's what would be normally considered a boy style, but I love it. I also tend to wear boys clothes for comfort when I'm working out or you know, just running errands. This happened this week. I had a rough week, and though I wasn't feeling sick or anything, I did feel drained. I had slept in, but I needed to run to Walmart for a couple of groceries. I knew exactly what I needed, there were a total of 5 things, and I knew exactly where they were. I didn't intend on staying long, as, again, I was exhausted. Now since I wasn't feeling the greatest, I opted for comfy clothes. Some baggy sweats, a t-shirt, a baseball cap to hide the little hair that I didn't feel like dealing with, and a loose fitting cardigan that would keep me warm, but not too warm. I had gotten everything I needed, and went to a self checkout lane. As I was scanning my groceries, I saw a man with baggy clothes and long, unkempt dark hair walking down the front of the store. His eyes were looking everywhere, but then he looked at me. Our eyes locked for maybe a second, and then he went behind me into the lane. He made a sudden change in his direction and passed inches behind me when there was plenty of space. While I was ringing up my items, he pretended to be looking at Pokemon and Magic the Gathering cards. I myself love Pokemon and Magic the Gathering, but this guy wasn't really even looking at them like he was trying to buy them. Now when I'm trying to buy cards, I'm looking at all the different boosters, decks, gift boxes to see if there's anything I'm missing or that might be helpful. This guy was sort of just staring in the general direction of the cards. Then he came around to the self checkout lane in front of me. From my side, it looked like he was buying something because for some reason these lanes face each other. At this point, I had finished my purchase and put everything back in the cart. When I passed by his lane, he was pretending to look at the candy behind the belt at his self-checkout lane, but he was staring at them just like he was the cards. Then I booked it. I had used the self-checkout on the opposite side of the store that I had parked on, as it was simply more convenient. I actually almost hit someone with my cart and apologized. I checked to make sure that I wasn't being followed on my way into the parking lot too. Thankfully, I wasn't, and I was able to store my groceries and the cart I was using and get out of there safely. I locked the car doors as soon as I got to my car, in case he did follow me into the parking lot and I didn't see him. I had considered going somewhere else, but I changed my mind and went straight home. I live on an air force base, so not everyone could make it through the gate, and I made sure to keep an eye out for any cars that could be following me. I considered that he might have been trying to figure out what my gender is. People will stare at me with this look on their face. Usually it's a confused look, because they're trying to figure out if I'm a girl or a boy. However, this guy wasn't doing this. I did consider that he might have been high, there is a serious drug problem in the town I live in. However, that doesn't explain why he beelined it to me. I was only there for 15 minutes tops. I was on a mission to get what I needed done and go back home. I do keep a handgun in my car, but that was in my car and wouldn't have helped me at all if he had caught me in the parking lot. My husband, who recently deployed, told me to keep a taser on me. It's a disguised taser, so you wouldn't know it by looking at it. I honestly didn't think a quick trip for groceries would be such a big deal. Next time, I'll be more careful and more prepared. It seemed like he was hovering around me trying to figure out something examining me. I just didn't care to stick around and figure out what it was. So I'll start this off by saying that my parents both worked when I was younger, so sometimes I would be alone at the house. This happened when I, male, was around 8 years old. I was home alone in the afternoon when knocking on the front door of the house started. I was told explicitly not to open the front door, but whoever it was kept knocking and ringing the doorbell. Young me thought maybe this was important, so I opened the door to be greeted by two adult men. They each started asking me questions that I barely remember, things like if my parents were home or if I had any siblings. I was intimidated by them as they were two grown men 
so I was hesitant to open the door all the way and backed up if they stepped closer. They said they had a meeting with my parents and needed to come in to wait for my parents to come home, but I told them no, closed the door, and locked it as well. This seemed to anger them as they went back to knocking and ringing the doorbell. I was extremely freaked out, and I ran into my bedroom and hid under my covers. Sometime later, as I don't remember when exactly, my parents got home and I told them what happened. This still freaks me out as they said they weren't expecting anyone. I haven't heard of any kidnappings from the area where I grew up, but I am creeped out to this day about what could have happened if I wasn't hesitant every time they moved closer to my door. This happened last summer. With my dad gone and my mom in a bad mental state, I decided to leave my apartment life and go back to live with her until she was in a better place mentally. It's a ranch style house with a basement. There are three bedrooms, one was my mom's, then my old room which was a total mess, and my sister's old room which was basically empty. My sister's room window faced the streets. I took the basement because I always wanted that to be my room, and now I finally had the chance, so why not? So everything was good, I started my new job, enjoying the basement life, and started seeing my mom get better again. One night I was shaken awake. I was startled, and my eyes dart wide open to see my mom. She whispered, Wake up. Wake up. There's someone in your sister's room. My heart sank. I was terrified beyond belief and couldn't believe what she had just said. I never thought I'd be in a situation like this. So I quickly get up from my futon and look for a weapon to use. I saw my dad's practice katanas, so I unsheathed one and made my way upstairs as quick as I could. The closer I got to my sister's room, I could hear something making noise in there. I placed my hand on the doorknob and readied my weapon the best I could. Almost unwillingly, I turned the knob and rushed into the room to see that nobody was in the room, but somebody was at the window trying to break in. I froze in fear for a second, and my mind jumbled on what to do. I realized that I had to get this guy, so I ran as fast as I could outside to the front, but he was gone. I didn't know which way he went. We live in a regular neighborhood, so we could have either ran up the street or down it, or hopped into somebody's backyard. Admittedly scared, I backed off, went back in the house, and locked everything I could. So, yeah, not a terribly scary experience, but a creepy one in my honest opinion. I can still see that creepy black silhouette every time I look out that window. I don't really know if this is the right subreddit, but I feel like I need some advice as to what this means. Over the last several months, me and my fiancé have noticed that when we get home, our welcome mat will be in different positions than when we left it. The best way I can describe it is that it looks like when an Amazon person tries to hide a package under the mat, but there's nothing there. It's as if someone was looking to see if we left a key under there. I have a picture of it, but I don't know how to add it on here. Anyways, do you think that someone could possibly be trying to case my house? This happened to me this summer, and I still feel kind of uncomfortable talking about it, but I want to know what you think. Sorry if this isn't the correct subreddit, I'm still getting used to Reddit. So it was a Saturday morning of a big check rave party, and I was chilling with my friends in the camp, drinking and chatting, and just enjoying a sunny day miles away from reality. At one point, I noticed a guy next to us leaning on his white car. He was tall and pretty fat, wearing a white baggy shirt, 90s style, and I think I saw him watching us. But this happens all the time on these parties, so I didn't think much of it. We continued drinking, and then my friend asks, anyone want some shrooms? And I replied, yep, but only three. You know I only eat three or seven. These are Psilocy Bohemica, pretty weak strain, but I don't need much. As soon as I ate them, that guy walked to our camp and asked, do you guys want a cigarette? Free cigarettes for all the good people. And then he threw a cigarette at all of my friends, except me. Not sure why, but I knew it was going to happen. Weird feeling. Then he had a little chat with my friends. I remember him saying, I've only got one rule, and it's rocking it badly. Then looked me straight in the eyes and said, I know what it's like to be completely empty. The fear was building up in me like crazy. I wasn't able to say a word, and he had this huge grin on his face. He hugged one of my friends, looked back at me, talking directly to me, he said, he's such a good guy, a real one, 
He's not playing anything, just being himself. My friend said, yeah, and they hate me for it. And the guy replied, boy, they love you for it. That's actually true. He's kind of a rough guy, but I do love him for his attitude. After this, I knew what was up, but why was he doing it? I approached my girlfriend and sat on the ground next to her. I was looking for comfort because I felt more or less distressed. Strooms were starting to kick in also. So I was sitting next to her, stroking her thigh, and he walked past us and just mumbled, Big love, huh? Then he informed us that he had bought himself a new pair of headphones and insisted on how comfortable they were to the ears, and pushed me to try them on. So I tried them, and there was a song playing. It was a hard tech remix of Nancy Sinatra, and I put them in the ear just as she was singing, My Baby Shot Me Down. I was sitting next to my girlfriend. It almost killed a part of me. He let me listen to the hard tech part for a second, and then he took them away from me and said, let's see how they fit to him, and gave them to my friend who was just asking normal stuff like how much they were, etc. All the time, he was just smiling at me like crazy. Then another weird guy appeared, and he was asking the guy what's up. He replied, come turn me off already, and the guy just shook his head and left. I need to mention that sometimes between those events he whispered to me, just never doubt. At this point, I was completely terrified. I couldn't even breathe well. I was white as a wall and there was a cold sweat all over me. I needed to leave. I stood up. I wasn't really able to walk straight and I wandered to the field. My girlfriend was following me. She was asking me what was up and I was repeating two things. Sorry honey, they hypnotized me and I'm just a little tick and I deserve to die. She was comforting me, telling me it was going to be okay. I said that she didn't understand, that I came here to die. It was like a weird psychedelic drama going on. I told her that there were two options. One, she was going to leave me. Or two, we will never be able to go to another party ever again. And she said, honey, I don't want to leave you. And I replied, so go with me there. And I pointed to some random spot in the field. She said okay, and we went. This exact scene was repeated about four times when I finally said, I can't escape it, baby, I think I'm dying. It was so hard to walk, to breathe, to stay awake. So I collapsed on the ground, and I was feeling like in a grave. I saw some people above me with closed eyes. They were like policemen telling me, We got you finally, you scum. I was so scared to die. My girlfriend said she was going to get help, but I begged her to stay. I was lying there, assuming I was dying. I felt everything leaving. From time to time, I thought something like, I'm the driver who's going to get my friends home. And the policeman said something like, Well, they can live without you. What about my mom? No one's going to miss you. So I accepted it, and I was ready to finally die. I really wanted to at this point. From that moment, everything in front of my closed eyes turned bright blue. I thought, is it coming now? But I just heard my girlfriend come back with my old friend that helped me to get through a lot of psychedelic stuff. They were sitting around me, and she was asking him about why this happens to me, and he was answering so nicely. It was like I heard them inside my head. It was such a pleasant moment to feel them around me. Then I woke up with the biggest blast of euphoria. I was feeling so, so, so good. My girlfriend grabbed my hand and said, You see, you didn't die, I told you. You should trust me more. And I just gave her a huge kiss. I'm a pretty anxious guy, and I struggled to rest my muscles, so this kiss was so free and fluid. I've never given her a kiss like that before. Then all my friends were just coming and some of them saying things like, Hey, I'm glad to see you smiling. I was genuinely happy. My girlfriend said she needed to go to the toilet, and two dogs showed up demanding my attention. They didn't want a rub or something to eat. I believe they were showing me how they treat each other on practical examples. Fights, making up, etc. Still checking if I'm watching them, and stopped whenever I lost my focus or got too excited. And started it all again when I had calmed down. They finished this as soon as my girlfriend was back, and she was telling me what's right, what's not. It was like clockwork. Then the final point. I walked past that guy and was smiling at him as he was earlier. He smiled at me too and said, You're rocking it badly, my man. That's his only rule, as he stated. I'm not sure if he was just trying to abuse me, kill me mentally, or if he was in fact good and tried to show me what's wrong with me. But this experience deeply scarred me, and it's been a cause for a lot of anxieties and paranoias that I still experience to this day. Have you ever encountered someone like this? Who are these guys? So that, my dear listeners, was five creepy encounters from Reddit. Those encounters kind of remind you that you need to be careful on who you trust, 
And you should always have some sort of surveillance camera facing your front door, just saying. And, um, let's see. Shrooms are bad, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let's just leave those life lessons in there. You can take them as you want. Doesn't really matter if you don't take them, because it's your life, not mine. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also, please consider leaving me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Lastly, down in the description, you'll find links for all of these stories, as well as links to my subreddit, Twitter, and Facebook account, as well as a website where you can submit your own story to me if you have a story you want me to read on my channel. I don't really have much more to say other than that. Stay safe out there, people. I love you all. Uh, have a fantastic week. I'll see you on the next video. But until then, sleep well.